the most distinctive feature of our Pacific Northwest landscape is the beautiful forest populated with an abundance of large conifer trees. But what exactly is a conifer? Is it just any evergreen tree? Well, no. Most conifers are evergreen, but there are some that are deciduous as well. And there are other evergreen trees that are not conifers. Some people think that every conifer is a pine tree. And yes, a pine tree is a conifer, but there are lots of other conifers that are not pines. For example, cedars, firs, spruce, hemlock, larches, and junipers are all conifers. So what is a conifer? Well, the word conifer means cone-bearing. And conifers are plants that generate both male and female cones, which house the reproductive structures, both the pollen and the seeds. Most cones are made up of compacted woody scales, and most conifers have both male and female cones on the same tree. Junipers, though, have cones that are more fleshy and look berry-like, and they generally produce male and female cones on separate plants, so you have a male plant and a female plant. In all conifers, pollination occurs when breezes carry the pollen from the male cones to the female cones. Conifers have been around for over 300 million years and may have been a food source for plant-eating dinosaurs. Certain specimens of conifers are also examples of the oldest, tallest, and most massive individual life forms on the planet. Conifers all share a unique style of leaves, generally narrow and thin, which in some conifers look like needles, and in some they're more scale-like. Because of the similarity in the leaf structure, many conifers can look very similar to each other, especially from a distance. So how can we tell them apart? Well, one way is to look really closely at the leaves and also the cones, especially the female cones, because the female cones tend to be larger and they're also much longer lived than the male cones. Pine trees with their needle-like leaves are the most widespread and familiar of the conifers and are found throughout the northern hemisphere. They're easy to identify because they're the only conifer with needles that are bundled together in groups of two, three, or five, and each bundle is wrapped in a paper-like sheath at the base. Pines also have that distinctive piney scent, and their cones are usually very hard and sometimes quite large. There are eight species of pines native to the Pacific Northwest, all of which can be found here in Oregon. Our two-needled pine is the shore pine, also known as lodgepole pine. We have three types of pines that have three needles per bundle, and those are the Jeffrey pine, the ponderosa pine, and the knobcone pine. Our five-needled pine trees in Oregon are the limber pine, sugar pine, western white pine, and white bark pine. One of the best ways to identify a spruce is to look at the needles. Their needles are usually quite stiff and usually quite pokey at the tips. If you break off a needle from a twig and look closely at that twig, you'll see a tiny little woody peg. In addition, the needles of spruces tend to be four-sided and you can usually roll them pretty easily between your fingers and thumb. They'll go clunk, 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 but they'll still roll. Another identifying feature is the papery-like scales on the cones, and the cones tend to hang down from the branches of the tree. We have three spruces that are native here in the Pacific Northwest. One is the Brewer spruce, which is found only in a small area of the Siskiyou Mountains down in southwestern Oregon and northwestern California near the coast. Then we have the Engelmann spruce, which is found mainly at higher elevations in the Cascades and also some parts of the Siskiyous. And then finally the Sitka spruce, which is a lower elevation tree in the coast range. Then we have the cedars. The true cedars belong to the genus Cedrus, and we don't have any native cedrus species here in the Pacific Northwest. But there are at least four conifers native here that we call cedars. The false cedars that we have growing here in the Pacific Northwest include the incense cedar, the Port Orford cedar, the Alaska cedar, and the western red cedar. Next, we'll talk about the true firs, which belong to the genus Abies. As a group, the true firs have cones that sit upright on the branch, and in both of those groups, the cedars and the firs, 
The cones, when they're mature, they disintegrate. The scales fall off individually and the seeds are then disseminated down to the ground. Immature cones that are still attached to the tree might be helpful in identification. If you can find one, uh, it's likely to be up high in the tree. You're really unlikely, however, to find an intact cone on the ground because of that tendency for them to fall apart when they're mature. A key feature to recognize a fir in comparison to a spruce is to look at the point where the needle attaches to the stem. Rather than a woody peg on a fir, you'll see a round, flat leaf scar. Fir needles are also generally pretty soft to touch and they're usually a little more flattened than the spruce needles are, so they're a little bit more difficult to roll between your fingers. Some of the true fir species that we have native here in Oregon include the grand fir, noble fir, white fir, subalpine fir, Pacific fir, and California red fir. Oregon state tree is the Douglas fir, which is not a true fir. It's a pseudosuga rather than an abies. The classification of this tree has changed a number of times over the centuries since we've been aware of it, since the late 1700s. It's been classified as a fir, a spruce, and a hemlock. And in fact, pseudosuga means false hemlock. It wasn't until the early 1950s that we started calling it pseudosuga menziesii, and that name seems to have stuck. Douglas fir is one of the most common trees here in Oregon and in the Pacific Northwest. It grows in areas from sea level all the way up to around 7,500 feet in elevation. It's found in 30 of Oregon's 36 counties and it's really easy to identify because it has a really distinctive cone that looks like it has mouse tails sticking out from underneath each scale on the cone. Here in the Pacific Northwest, we have many other native conifer species, and those include the mountain hemlock, the western hemlock, Baker's cypress, which is found only down in the Siskiyou Mountains. We also have the coast redwood, and we have the western larch, which is one of those deciduous conifers that loses its needles every year. If you'd like to learn more about conifers or plant identification in general, come check out our horticulture classes or other programs here at Clackamas Community College.